start to mosque and you engage in worship of the Lord. But what are we doing? We're running around the city like mad nutters, uh, looking for cheap perfume and other so-called bargains. So everybody's interested in getting so much stuff because we have somehow or other been, uh, we have bought into this idea that by getting more things, we can experience pleasure, we can experience joy. And for that reason, we have to go to university. Because if you have a degree, that means you're employable material. It means we can hire you. Of course, you're not going to work in the subject you study, but that's a different topic. It just means you're hireable material. Huh? So we learn how to do things right, but we don't learn how to do the right things. Have you ever done the, the wrong homework? Has it ever happened to you? And you've done it perfectly. But it was the wrong homework. And you're very proud of yourself. But then came that moment where they said, you know, okay, now homework such and such. And you missed it. Uh, it's called barking up the wrong tree. It happens so many times in our lives. You know, we misplace our mobile phone, a set of keys. And immediately our mind goes on a rampage. Oh, you took it. Oh, somebody has taken it. Oh, somebody has stolen it. But then, just a second later, we find it somewhere else where we never thought. And we realize that we have actually made a mistake. So the conditioned soul has these inherent qualities, these defects. We are born. This body is born with inherent defects. Number one, we have imperfect senses. If you look up at the sky, you think that the sun is about this big, is a yellow disk. But the sun is many, many times bigger than the earth. But our eyes tell us the sun is about the size, like this, this size. So our senses are imperfect. We also say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. We may think certain things is very beautiful, but other people will not agree at all. Just like to us, a cockroach is not very, not very attractive, right? Did you ever come back to your room? Those of you who have traveled a bit, and you open the door, and on your bed sits a big cockroach looking at you. What do you want? This is my room. Huh? And then you go, no, 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 this is my room. Now this cockroach may look very ugly to us, but you know why there are so many cockroaches in this world? Do you have any wild guesses? Because the male and the female cockroach, they think each other to be very beautiful. Can you imagine that? <laughs> no, you cannot. It's inconceivable to our limited mind. It is inconceivable. You know how we look to a cockroach? We are monsters. <laughs> we are ugly, big, dangerous monsters to the cockroach. No matter how beautiful you are, how, no matter how perfect your body is looking, how much makeup you got, how much nice suits and clothes you've got on, you're a big ugly monster to the cockroach. And in the same way to us, the cockroach, you know, doesn't look very attractive. So our senses are very limited. We have imperfect senses. We have the tendency to cheat and to lie. Have you ever noticed? We analyze. I mean, come on, we're in the family, you know, we don't have to tell anybody else. This doesn't leave the room, you know, nobody knows that you're at the Hare Krishna temple. So, <laughs> you can admit, huh? it has happened, that we have, on certain occasions, altered the truth slightly, just to suit our own purpose. So that tendency to lie is there. What else are the four imperfections? To lie, illusion. Illusion. Sometimes we're just under illusion. We just don't know what's going on. We just don't know what's happening. Because our ability to perceive is very small. Like right now I'm looking into this room and I see about 30% of this room with my visual capacity. I don't see what's behind me. I don't see what's above me. I just can't see it because I'm limited by my vision, by my senses, what to speak of my mental ability, my intellectual ability to perceive. Hmm? So, we're under illusion, constantly. 
So how can we attain a state of happiness, a state of freedom from distress, being disqualified by being stuck into a machine which has so many disqualifications? Someone might say then, you know, why is God making all these faulty machines, you know? We should put in a customer complaint <laughs> to the manufacturer. Why does he make such an imperfect world where everybody grows old and gets diseased and dies eventually? But he does so, so that we can actually get detached. So we can actually learn that this place is not the perfect place for a gentleman or a lady. Now, if you're in prison, I don't know, I'm not going to ask who has been in prison yet. <laughs> but just let's theoretically put it out there. If you're in prison and you're complaining that you don't like the food, and you don't like the visiting hours, and you don't like, you know, that five by seven yard stretch, where you can go and have your walks half an hour a day huh? next to the toilet block. So then who is to blame? Can you write a complaint to the government? Of course you can. I mean everything's possible. So we are limited by our physical, mental, psychological and emotional abilities. Now spiritual practice, this mantra sets us free from our limitations because the soul is inherent pure conscious and blissful full of eternity and knowledge why because we are of the same quality of god we are parts and parcels of god we are small parts and particles of krishna and as such we have the same qualities as the lord has but we have them in minute quantity that's why we can be covered over by illusion that's why we tend to forget. But in our inherent nature, in our inherent quality, we are of the same quality as Krishna. So if we connect ourselves again through the mantra, through the chanting process of the holy names of the Lord with Krishna, we again experience this inherent nature, this inherent joyful nature. Have you ever experienced that if you just hear the holy name and you don't think about all the million things you need to do in this world, how peaceful you become? Try it out. It works. You are all very educated. You're all scientifically minded people. Many of you are not born in this country. Neither was I. So we have found our way here to London, right? <laughs> Somehow. We've made it. So we're many of us. We're far away from home. So make this scientific experiment and chant this mantra a few times a day, a few minutes a day one round as much as you can and see what effect it has on your mental state on your emotional state and on the state of your heart the soul wants to love and wants to be loved that is the nature of each and every living entity why is everybody running around town trying to buy so much stuff to put on their bodies to be more lovable isn't it we want to be the objects of affection for others Huh? Of course, the French invented perfume in order to do away with bodily odors and, you know, you got to wear clothes because you can't run around like an ape. But basically, besides the basic necessities, we want to be loved and we want to love others. And what prevents us from doing so? Our false ego. Our ideas of thinking who we are and what other people are and our tendency to lord over, to encroach, to try to manipulate, and try to possess and own.